Are you guys tired of laminated kits yet? I would be if this one wasn't the best one yet. High Speed Edo, the people who make my other favorite kit, just released their take on a laminated IPS kit, and it is by far the best one. Normally, I do my reviews after the tutorial, but I feel like it makes more sense to talk it up right now. Then after you buy the kit from Zed Labs using code Jake to save some money, you can come back for the tutorial. Or you could just watch the video in full twice, it's up to you. I should also clarify that I did pay for this with my own money, but if you do use code Jake to save some money, I do get a kickback. Either way, I get pretty much the same amount of money no matter what kit you buy. So I really mean it when I say that this one is way better than the other two. First off, this is the easiest kit to install. It will require some trimming if you don't want to buy their shell, but it is totally worth it. No stupid brackets and you aren't forced to buy a proprietary shell. Just some good old double-sided tape and you can use pretty much any shell you want, as long as you trim it correctly. And the double-sided tape is actually installed on this one. Who would have thought? My one gripe with the insulation is the shielding. It's really nice to have everything in one piece and put together for any potential beginners, but it's kind of hard to remove the shielding. But unfortunately, I may have broken my screen trying to do this, which is something you'll have to do if you want to remove the touchpads like me. It'd be a lot better if there were cutouts for the touchpads like the other solder points. But even that's a bit of an issue. You really shouldn't solder on top of your screen. And yeah, I know I'm known for doing that in the past. If you heat up your LCD for too long, it can cause your screen to have dark spots like this. So you need to be really quick if you do solder on top of your screen. If the creators of this kit are watching, maybe try to create a little more separation between the board and the screen. It'd be nice to have some cutouts for the touchpad so I can remove them easily and maybe try and make it easier to remove the shielding. I don't know, maybe it was just mine. Other than that, insulation was a breeze. You'll see in a minute. But how does the screen stack up? While it's not a bad kit, the plastic lens kit isn't very close to either of the other laminated kits. So I'm gonna focus on comparing High Speed Edo to Funny Playing. Both have an identical peak brightness with High Speed Edo getting slightly dimmer at its lowest, even though both have 15 levels of brightness. I'm still not sure why people are giving GBA kits color palettes like these, but there are a lot more choices with the High Speed Edo's kit. Regardless, color palettes like this on full color devices like these are dumb in my opinion. Continuing on with my opinions, while they are very close to each other, I think I prefer the colors on the High Speed Edo a touch more. I even like the colors more on this than their V2 kit that I love. I just wish that the laminated kit got as bright as the V2. But going back to the two laminated kits, both have menus to change the settings. On Funny Playings, you hold select, then use L, R, and select to navigate. On High Speed Edos, you just quick press all three buttons to open and close it, and also use all three to navigate. But you don't have to open the menu just to change the brightness, which I cannot express how nice that is. Obviously, there are the touchpads, but you can use select and L to lower, and select and R to raise the brightness. The only real downside is you can't use the touchpads to open the menu like you can with funny playing. But that's really only a bummer for people who aren't gonna solder. Oh, and both of these kits have grid line and frame blending options if you care about that. To me, just like with the kits that aren't laminated, High Speed Edo is the clear winner. And I'm planning to go more in depth on that in a GBA IPS kit roundup video later this year. Once I actually have one of every mod kit, of course. I'm pretty close, so subscribe if you want to see me compare them all in the future. But I like this laminated kit so much that I'm willing to put my money in it. I just want there to be a wider variety of colors and UV prints for their pre-trimmed shells. Because unfortunately, they don't work with regular IPS-ready shells. I also have a lot of V2 kits that I need to get through first. That being said, I'd love to help you guys out on future revisions, whether it's beta testing, consulting, anything like that. Even other mod kits, I'd love to help you guys out. I also have a nice community that gives me a lot of feedback, so hit me up. But I think it's about time I actually show you how to install this kit. So grab your screwdrivers and plug in your irons. Let's mod some Game Boys. Starting with the Y0 bit that is the tri-wing, there are six screws all along the sides. And there's one Phillips screw down here. Then you can just pop it off and you set that back half off to the side. Then keeping the same bit, there are three spots for screws on the inside. Just like this one, not all of them are gonna be used. You'll most likely only have two, but we can remove those now. And then we can pop these two tabs up and we can pull the motherboard up by the cart slot. And then we can push down on this ribbon cable 
and pull back. Now your motherboard is free and we're ready to go. You can set the rest of that off to the side, assuming you're not reusing any of it. Now here's a section where I recommend cleaning your Game Boy's motherboard if you haven't done that already. From here, I'm gonna put the motherboard off to the side and we're gonna get out our new shell. The orange shell I grabbed came with yellow buttons for some reason, and it came with a plain gray membranes, which is pretty lame. But that doesn't matter because I grabbed some plain gray ones to use anyways. I really want this to mimic the original Spice Orange Game Boy because I've always wanted one of those. While we're here, I'm going to put the light pipe in now. It'll probably fall out because it doesn't fit in super tightly, but I almost always forget this, so don't forget this. It just goes in this hole right above this screw post. Now let's get out our mod kit. Mine came in a package like this, but you can also buy this from other retailers like RGRS and Zed Labs. Zed Labs was actually going to send me one of these, but I had already purchased this from AliExpress. But either way, you can use code Jake to save some money at either of those places. So this mod kit comes pretty much fully assembled. You've got the board, the screen, the lens, everything all in one. Even your touch pads are ready to rock. And for the optional soldering, you get all three of the wires you need. And don't worry, you get both the ribbon cables if you have a 32 pin or a 40 pin GBA. Just to reiterate, this is a completely solderless kit. You do not have to do any soldering. That's what these touch pads are for. Pull this tab up. You can start by sliding the ribbon cable in like this and then locking it down. Then we can take the other side and slide it into the Game Boy Advance and lock those tabs down. Then I'm actually going to take our back half and put that over the top of the Game Boy. That way we can take our batteries and slot them in now and test to make sure everything's working. The touch sensor up top seems to be the color palette and the one at the bottom is the brightness adjustment. Now let's actually put it all together. You can take that back half off, then we're gonna take the ribbon cable back out of the GBA for now, pull those tabs back up, and you can pull the screen out. And let's just install the screen now. And here's the first optional part. If you wanna go the solderless route, ignore this part, or I guess if you just don't want the touch pads in general, Pay attention to this. I'm going to lift up the shielding because it is pretty easy to take off. I'm gonna find this hole in the side here and I'm just gonna pop that tab up. I'm gonna go to the bottom corner, do the same thing. And then I'm just gonna remove this entire backing. Eventually, once you pop all those tabs, it should come off. But unfortunately, I may have broken my screen trying to do this. Hopefully we're still working here. But for now, I'm gonna keep chugging along and pretend like it is working. I really don't want these stupid touch pads. So we're gonna take our tweezers and our soldering iron, and we're just gonna go ahead and remove these by desoldering both points. Just touch the iron to this point here and pull the touch pad away while it's heated. You really shouldn't be soldering on top of a screen like this, but they stuck this board down to it, so it's our only option. Now that we have those removed, I'm gonna put this back on since our solder points are accessible through this hole. Just push it back down and the clip should come back to life. Now I'm going to flip this around and we're gonna solder for L, R, and select. Since we wanna be as quick as possible while we're soldering on top of our screen, I'm gonna use flux here. Iron down, solder in, lift up. It should only ever be that fast. Iron down, solder in, lift up. Iron down, solder in, lift up. Hopefully we don't have any dark spots on our screen now, but we still have to solder some wires to it starting with the L wire and the R wire, and then the select wire. And that's all the soldering we need to do for now. Then now that we're done soldering in this area, we can go ahead and put our ribbon cable back in. Lift the latch up, stick it in, and put the tab down. Welcome back, those of you who aren't soldering. We can now take our front half, peel off this white part, stick all of our wires and ribbon cables through the hole, and then go in this side, slide it in to place up there, and then you can stick it down. This screen sticks out a little further than the screen lens, so that's why we have to go into that side. And then flipping it over, everything should be good. This is exactly how a laminated screen lens should go in. Take notes, funny playing. They're not watching this video. Now, if you want to keep those touch pads, you can stick the bottom one anywhere along here. And then for the one on top, I recommend sticking it up here, up against the top wall. Now for the soldering crew, grab your motherboard. And I like to orient it like this. We're going to solder the select wire to TP2, put a little bit of flux down, iron down, solder in, lift up. That quick and easy, folks. Then make sure you have the correct wire for select, and you can stick it down over the top and press your solder into it, or press it into the solder. Easy peasy. And I'm just going to clean up that flux since it's right next to our start button. And if you want to, you can solder L to TP9 and 
R to TP8, but I don't like to do that because specifically on R, if you don't place the wire properly, you'll either go over one of these screw holes or you'll go over one of these chips and you'll have some shorting for R and R will be constantly pressed down. That's happened to me a couple times recently. It's not fun. So instead of perfectly placing the wire every time, I went back to the old ways that I'll show later. But for now, that's all we need and everybody we can put our buttons in. For the folks with wires, I recommend having L and R stick out to the correct sides, which in this case, in this orientation, L is gonna go to the right, R is gonna go to the left. Then we're gonna put the ribbon cable underneath the select wire. This is also a good time to remind you, if you have not put your light pipe in, do that now. It's probably hiding out in the screw bag. And once again, it goes right there. Then we can put the motherboard down. If you have the select wire soldered, make sure that the wire doesn't go over any of the buttons. Then you might have to fight the speaker a little bit as you put the motherboard down, but eventually everything should click into place for you. Then I recommend picking it up like this and then screwing it down with those three Phillips heads. Your screw set might have a longer Phillips that would go in the battery area. It should actually be around the same size Sometimes they do it as a gold small tri-wing. Sometimes it's a longer black crosshead. Just be very careful and make sure that the three you put in here all match in size and color. You can also reuse your original screws if you want to. Then we can fold the ribbon cable back over and stick that in to its slot. Then we can lock those two tabs down, but make sure that everything is nice and flush. Then for the last bit of soldering, we're gonna get our L wire and put it up to this post. It's the second post from the left. And we're gonna heat that post up and then just stick the wire into the hot glob of solder. And then for neatness, I like to wrap this wire around at least one capacitor, sometimes both if it's a little longer. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. And I really mean the exact same thing. It is not mirrored over here. It is still the second pin from the left. So heat it up, stick it in there and make sure that wire ain't going nowhere. Now, if you want to, for neatness, you can tape this wire down. I'm gonna go ahead and stick most of the wire underneath the cart slot. And I mean underneath it, not in the middle of it. If you put it in the middle of it, your cart probably won't fit in it. And just double check that none of your wires are going over any screw posts or screw holes. And in this case, we're good. So now we can all finish this video together by putting the side pieces, L and R, and the power switch in. Take our back half and put that down. In my case, I have to swap over to tri-wing now, but for some of you, it might be a Phillips head down here. And if you're in my situation, you'll have a smaller tri-wing and six larger tri-wings. The small one is what goes into this slot here. And then put the longer tri-wing screws in each of these six holes. And then since we're here, we can go ahead and put the sticker on the back if you want one. Don't line it up from the middle. It'll actually not be even. I don't understand that but it never works out for me. So I go from this side and the hole for this sticker is just not accurate at all. Nice. Let's put our batteries in and let's test this thing. And moment of truth, did I break the screen? I think I need to clean my power switch even more. Dare I say it, this is nearly the perfect mod kit. I'm excited for the future revisions in the ecosystem of shells to grow around it. But I am curious what you guys think. Is it better than funny playing? You already know my answer. Let me know in those comments down below. Of course, you can use code Jake to save some money buying this kit at Zed Labs, but you can also buy it and save with code Jake at RGRS. But as of right now, they're not selling those pre-trimmed shells like Zed Labs is, and I don't know if they're ever going to. Also, as of recording, it's not officially on Zed Labs yet, but I know it's coming. Or if you still don't feel quite confident enough to do this yourself, you can buy any model of Game Boy pre-modded for me on my website, RetroRemaster.com. But hopefully soon I can start stocking some of these laminated kits. But anyways, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.